What's going on internet? It's been a while. So today's video is uh, going to be a little bit all over the place with a few little bits and pieces of things that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. But primarily, in summary, it's going to be about uh, small scale video production on Linux and uh, I guess just what my setup looks like now and uh, how it's changed from what it used to be and I think more appropriately, hopefully for, the, for, you, who are, uh, for you who are tuning in, um, to kind of showcase some of the little tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way, especially in regards to trying to keep this setup as, uh, as small and as transferable as possible. I could throw in the whole minimalism hashtag there to kind of make it a little bit more trendy, but honestly, it's about practicality for me. At the moment, I don't have a dedicated like studio space. And so in effect, I kind of have to set up and tear down uh, whenever I do a video. Um, and for me, which involves a lot of screencasting, um, voiceover, editing, um, that kind of setup, it's not, uh, there, there are bits and pieces and especially some, some extra little uh, devices that I have uh, gathered over the last few months, which has made this process an awful lot easier. I'm talking specifically from a Linux standpoint because that's where my experience has been over the last 10 years or so. And, uh, and so I'll be sharing a little bit about the apps and the workflow that I use for video production on Linux as well. Now, bear in mind, I, I premises this by, by saying that uh, this is small scale. So this is not something that is manageable if you're doing you know, video production or you're wanting to do like a daily upload or anything like that. This is something that I'm doing as I can fit it in and around my schedule, which I'll talk about uh, as the video goes on. But um, for, for new subscribers who have uh, joined my channel after seeing uh, you know, recent comparison videos between Linux distros, welcome. And for those of you who are usually here, uh, it's great to see you all again and uh, hopefully you might learn something new out of this video. Maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't, but we'll see how we go. So um, first of all, there's kind of two devices that I'm gonna be highlighting a little bit in this video uh, in regards to uh, small scale video production on Linux. And they're two things that have uh, helped immensely since I have started uh, messing around with this a bit more. Uh, and they're both, uh, they're both products that Satachi has sent out to me. Now, I wanna premise this video by saying it's not paid or sponsored by Satachi at all, but they reached out to me and said, would I be interested in looking at some of their products and giving my thoughts and opinions on them? And I was wanting to kind of uh, look into how I was doing things anyway. And it just turned out that their products that they recommended to, to send out to me fit like a glove with what I'm doing and where uh, and how I do things here with this channel and with the small scale video production that I do. So I'm gonna also mention those two products as we go along here and hopefully you find the whole thing helpful. That was a really long intro. So stick with me, we'll get to the meat and potatoes. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to explain what exactly is going on in the workspace here as it stands. Um, and I hope you appreciate how convoluted this is. I'm like sitting off to the side, I've got a mic like balanced on top of a printer, it's crazy. Anyway, so this is kind of, um, this is kind of the shot I think that would probably best summarize how it looks like when I'm working here. I've just got Audacity there recording um, the USB microphone, which is, I don't know if I could even pivot around that far, but I could try. Uh, yep, there it is, precariously balanced on top of the printer there. And again, don't know how much of that you can see, but we'll swing back around and now you're all dizzy. Uh, so um, the, uh, the, I guess the two things that have really helped in terms of uh, since last year, the things that have changed the most are, first of all, this laptop, um, which is the uh, Lenovo Yoga 730. Um, it, it's, bas it's a pretty mediocre machine really by today's standard. It, it's an eighth gen i5, eight gig RAM, 256 gig storage. and um, Honestly, the bit that surprises me the most about it is just how much the benchmarking of a, a quad-core um, processor from, you know, even the low voltage ones from last year are able to bench almost as much as my old uh, quad-core i7 Sandy Bridge from tw 2011. And that was a fully, um, that was a fully loaded laptop that was a huge behemoth. And that's what ran the channel for years. Um, and now most of that, I can get almost equivalent times in terms of rendering and that kind of thing from this little machine as I could from that. Um, now, obviously the trade-offs that you make to get a laptop this small, and I mean, I'm not gonna pick it up while it's recording stuff because that'd just be silly, but 
um, is that uh, obviously it's got the whole you know flip around type thing going on um, but it also means you're limited to just USB-C on the side here um, and that's where um, that's where a lot of the the extra little tweaks that I've made over the last month or two have really come in handy. So first of all, um, from uh, like I mentioned before, the two products that I got sent from Satachi have really made a big difference in this regard. So first of all, um, a wireless keyboard. When you're doing a lot of editing and also a lot of script writing, like a really great keyboard comes in handy. And um, and I've dealt with a lot of Bluetooth keyboards um, over the years. And there's a couple of key things that I want to point out about this one. Um, so first of all, they've got a very interesting key profile where um, the command keys and uh, and the keys along the bottom, so the spacebar function key, and I don't know how well you can see that, but the spacebar function key and uh, and the command key are all uh, concave. So um, you, they, they've got a raised kind of um, bulgy profile to them. Uh, whereas the the keys themselves, the letter keys, are convex. I think I've got that right. Uh, where they they've actually got a dip in them, so your fingers kind of rest into the keys quite nicely. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is that um, uh, they've got separate Bluetooth profiles, so I can actually jump between uh, this machine, which is uh, running Fedora. I've got a MacBook Air that I use for uh, for my job, and um, and. What other computers? I don't think I have any other computers, but I could if I wanted to have a third profile in there as well for, I don't know, a phone or a tablet or something like that. Um, so it's a rechargeable battery um, via USB-C, which is great. One less charging cable to deal with. That's never going to focus the way that I want it to. So that's that. Um, but the obviously the overall design, a lot of the things that Satachi touch are very, very nice. Um, but the, the thing that helps me out as, uh, as somebody who's dealing with video, especially on a small scale, is that I've really come to um, love keyboard shortcuts. And I'll have a couple of shots here of uh, some of the keyboard shortcuts that I use in Kaden Live that really help speed up the process for me. Um, but the reason why a keyboard plays into stuff like this is because when you're using uh, key combinations or keyboard shortcuts, you don't want to be, um, as a touch typist, I don't want to constantly be jumping down uh, and uh, and trying to identify where I am on the keyboard. Whereas something like this, especially that has the f different feel between the keys that are uh, indented, but between the keys that are that are kind of bulgy, they um, it makes it makes finding the, those keyboard shortcuts really um, excellent. Compared to, and I'm just going to jump up really quick to get the last keyboard that I was using. Um, so this was the last keyboard that I was using, which is still a pretty decent keyboard, but all the keys are exactly the same, like flat as a tack. Uh, and from a design standpoint, that's quite nice. Um, but uh, for, for something that's similarly priced, this is the um, Microsoft design uh, keyboard. And you can see I've still got the mouse chilling here over in the corner. Um, this was the keyboard that was doing all the editing. It's uh, replaceable batteries in the back there. So that is what it is. But in terms of, um, it makes a tangible difference for me when I'm constantly using those keyboard shortcuts in Caden Live, in GIMP, um, having the physical distinguishing factor there with the keys is really helpful. Um, so I can't speak too much as to the battery life yet because I just honestly haven't used it long enough. Um, but the overall, um, but the overall build quality and, and experience of typing on this um, day to day is uh, is pretty solid. And in terms of all the media um, keys, um, all of the um, like volume work just fine, uh, brightness that kind of thing, and uh, and then some of the other special function keys kind of depends on what you're running on. So obviously this is geared towards Mac users primarily, but all of the function keys that can translate over do. So yeah, like I said, brightness, volume, playback, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's really all I've got to say about the keyboard. The other little bit that's really helped uh, a lot is um, is this little USB hub. And I guess everybody living in USB-C land these days, this is just the reality. But the the thing with uh, this one is um, they've they've made a few revisions on the their multi-port adapter. Honestly, I've seen so many of these uh, of the Satachi brand out and about, just of you know people plugged into MacBooks. But it is um, but it's cool to it's cool to see an adapter that um, that works pretty well. It's got the uh, card reader on the back end there with micro SD and full SD card. We've got USB 3 and you've got HDMI. Um, I can't remember what exactly it's up to, whether it's 1.4 or 1.6, um, but it will drive up to 4K at 30 hertz. So it's not full 60 hertz 4K, but it can do 4K up to 30 hertz. 
uh, if you want. And I'm pretty sure it has the USB, uh, USB Type-C pass-through on the end there as well. Um, Honestly, the probably the nicest thing about it is a very shallow thing in terms of its design and its durability because it's aluminium, it, it lasts a bit longer. Um, and like, honestly, these are these are as honest as I can get. I mean, Satachi as a brand have, have kind of positioned themselves pretty well as a premium, uh, as a premium accessories brand. And here in Australia, they do uh, sort of charge a bit of a premium for it as well. Um, but it also means that you're getting what you pay for in terms of longevity and with accessories that are going to get chucked in and out of a bag day in day out um, that's quite important to me personally um, so would i shell out um, my own money to buy these things uh, it's quite possible in fact um, this particular one the the multi-port adapter this was going to be the adapter that i purchased i was literally weeks away from getting it when satachi happened to reach out to me uh, and um, so I was only more than happy to accept the, their recommendation or their, um, their offer to send out some of their products to review. Um, so I guess in, in other words, yes, I would buy these products with my own money. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, that decision is up to you. Whether you like the design, the aesthetic and um, the particular functionality that these offer for the price that they are is up to you. Um, but for me, in my workflow, it's made a big difference. And yes, there are others that I could use, but uh, for me, the, the durability of these um, devices, first of all, and then obviously the functionality and the little, uh, the little flares that they throw in does make a big difference um, for me in the small scale video production that I do. Okay, so awkward framing being what it is, um, this is kind of what things look like when I'm actually doing stuff. Um, so audio is all recorded through the blue snowball that I've had for years served me really well um, the I've obviously got the the computer flipped around the only reason I do that is because the keyboard and the trackpad no probably the keyboard on the Lenovo Yoga 730 isn't amazing um, so I prefer to get it out the way get the screen closer to me and then with the other accessories filled in good keyboard and decent mouse I'm a happy camper um, typically speaking I'll have the tripod set back that way uh, and that will um, kind of give you the shot that most of you guys see uh, from day to day. And then, uh, yeah, simple lamp in the corner that most of you have pointed out is like a Pixar lamp. It's not really, because it's made out of wood. Okay, so here's a video project that's open and that I've worked on. Uh, it was the best apps video that I did at the end of last year. I'm using this video as an example because, oh, this project as an example, because it has a little bit more complexity to it than just a straight up uh, distro review. So first of all, uh, when it comes to screen recording, any screen recording, I kind of switch between simple screen recorder, uh, which is what I'm using now, and OBS, uh, depending on the complexity of the situation. Um, and uh, when it comes to, usually I'll layer them in with, uh, with obviously the live voiceover that's coming directly from uh, the mic and the screen recording. Now, if I'm doing a, like a live talking headshot like I am here, usually what I'll do is, um, is I'll have the camera, which is a, a Canon G7X Mark II, um, that will be recording on, just onboard audio, and then I will have the microphone off to the side and sync those up in post. Now, how I do that is, uh, is something that I uh, found once in Caden Live and then never forgot it. Um, so first of all, you just want to um, highlight both of the clips that you want to match up. Um, actually, no, you, you highlight your source uh, first and you say set audio reference. So you right click on that video clip that has the source audio track and you set audio to reference. Then you want to click the audio track underneath it that you're trying to sync it up with and say align audio to reference. Depending on how long the clip is, that will affect how long it takes to do that. But as soon as they added that feature to Caden Live a few years back, I was very, very grateful because it uh, took a lot of time out of my workflow. It'll do weird funky things on the timeline if you don't give it space to move around. So when you first sync up a clip, make sure that there's plenty of blank space before and after for it to be able to move the clip around on its own. Otherwise, it'll just do weird things. Once you've got them synced, uh, you can just highlight them and then group them together so that you can move them around on the timeline together. Um, so that was one thing. Now, the other thing that I mentioned before is uh, shortcuts. The wonderful thing about Caden Live is the fact that you can uh, customize, I mean, you can do it with all video editors, I would assume, but you can customize um, keyboard shortcuts uh, to the application itself. Now, I'm running the flat pack version of Caden Live, so I'm sort of always at the latest stable release. Uh, which is again a whole nother story but when it comes to keyboard shortcuts the first thing that i do when i load up Caden live on a new distro is look for mute and assign it to control shift m i'll do volume to control shift v 
and uh, I think oh, I also do normalize um, to control shift N these are the things that I'm just doing all the time with every single clip that I get I normalize it I am uh, adjusting volume on it and I'm muting it and uh, it was just one of those things where instead of um, trying to go through here right click add effect and using all these pop-out menus it was way simpler just to hit that keyboard shortcut time and time again and uh, and that just saves me an awful lot of time in times past I would have used the HUD menu the heads-up display menu that Ubuntu's unity had to find these commands for me and it was the best thing in the world but because of the fact no desk uh, no desktop environment seems to want to do that anymore uh, sad face um, then I just stick with the keyboard shortcuts and uh, if I'm being honest I would probably also include ones on uh, fading in and fading out man alive it is getting noisy out there um, I would be doing someone is pressure cleaning I kid you not and it's as soon as I start recording um, and I would probably be using uh, probably a shortcut around um, audio fade-ins and fade-outs because they're just the sort of things that are the bread and butter of editing and if you can take time out uh, out of your workflow then you should um, I can do a whole separate video on the video editing side of things but really in this video I'm trying to look at the, the whole process as best I can um, so some of the other apps that you're probably familiar that I do use um, GIMP is the one that I use for all my thumbnails honestly this particular file I originally created this file in Kubuntu 18.04 review and uh, it's just gone through so many iterations um, and uh, and honestly it would be great to have um, version history I don't know if there is version history in GIMP or not I'm gonna guess that there's not um, but I could be wrong let me know in the comments if, if there is a version history um, usually I just have a bunch of layers here and I'm just playing around with uh, whatever uh, whatever thumbnail kind of strikes me on the day and again keyboard shortcuts play a big role here uh, specifically control uh, or sorry shift s for the scale tool and uh, and jumping between the move tool the scale tool and that's probably about it maybe the text tool as well are the main ones that I use in GIMP um, so again keyboard shortcuts get to know them it'll save you so much time um, the other one that I use a lot is uh, audacity and that's what I was using before that's what I use to record audio when I'm doing a talking head head segment um, I'll record it on audacity export it as an uncompressed wave file and then import it into the timeline or into my project here in Caden live um, in terms of rendering settings uh, this is uh, again it's probably an area that I'm not doing as well as I could have um, but again it, for me it's all about time and efficiency and at the moment I'm only doing 1080p um, because I don't see the point in going to 4k at this stage for the sort of work that I do um, I've got the video at 23 uh, 23 quality um, that's just the parameter it's a random number that represents the quality of the FFmpeg encoder I've got the audio set at 192 and uh, and it's just a straight h.264 export you crank all your threads up to eight or at least I've got eight threads so that's what I do and uh, usually for a relatively uncomplicated 10 minute video I'll usually get about a 15 to 18 minute export time which I think is pretty decent for a very thin and light um, eighth generation i5 uh, the low voltage so that is what it is um, and that is more or less the the whole process from uh, almost start to finish if the if the video like this one involves a little bit more uh, time usually uh, more complicated projects with a lot of different bits and pieces such as the one you're watching right now will probably take about four hours um, of, of editing filming and playing around and as you can see I've already lost some uh, some video clips here um, just from moving them around in my uh, workflow speaking of uh, in terms of files I'll usually place all of the files and folders together in one area uh, I keep it on an external hard drive because I don't ever want to uh, lose it but I usually sort them into a roll B roll uh, screen recording and uh, I've got a you know bucket load of music here um, and um, and then other things depending on the project whether it's uh, whether it's um, assets from uh, different uh, clients that are wanting to do a sponsor segment or whether it is a different type of project um, yeah I'll usually try and throw things in folders as best I can and then all of the final rendered out videos just live here uh, in the in the main folder um, so yeah that's kind of how I try and organize all the files and drag them in um, but it is pretty helpful um, in terms of Caden lives actual uh, search tools here for trying to find what you're looking for and every time I do a project it's a new save file and I can um, jump in and around and copy paste things between um, projects so that's kind of uh, that's kind of the video editing side of things 
uh, and then once I've exported it, it'll just be uploaded. I'll schedule it for a certain release date uh, and time and then uh, upload the thumbnail, throw in some tags and that's about it. So as best as I can put it from start to finish, that's what the video production process looks like and how these little bits and pieces have helped me along the way. Um, honestly, it's actually amazing how much I can do with the, the very compact mobile kind of setup that I've got going on. And, uh, and while my editing needs aren't particularly strenuous compared to a lot of uh, YouTube channels out there, um, I'm still amazed that I can get all of it done nowadays on such a, a on such a thin light portable setup to the point where I can fit literally everything into a pretty small bag. Um, so it just goes to show you how far technology has come and the fact that I have been able to use the tools and the, and the operating systems that I've been talking about for all these years to make that happen, I think is amazing as well. So let me know what your workflow is and what, kind of, what are some of the tools and tips that you have picked up in your line of work in the comments below. And, uh, and we'll kind of explore this series a little bit more as well. If you haven't checked out uh, my first uh, interview of IG Talks, then go and check that out as well. And uh, and yeah, if uh, if you're a if you're a developer of a project or or whatever, and you want to reach out to me, then you can find my business email on my channel as well. Well, thanks so much for watching. Hope you picked up something from today's video. Uh, yeah, we'll see you all on the next one. Peace out.